So here's another quiver, jigs. Hey guys, we got jigs here and I just want to explain how we have them set up. I tried a method that was with the top hook already attached to the, to the jig on top. And one thing that I noticed with it is that I'll have to have this set up on each of the jigs that I want to switch to. So one thing I'm going to explain is keeping it separate from the rest of it so that this would only be on your leader line. So we have a few different variations here. And one thing that you all see in common is that they only have the bottom hooks. The hooks on the bottom, you can use a few different variations. You can use this, which is a Jobu 9 aught or you could use something like this, which is the Mustad uh, Jigging Assist. A still a very decent sized hook on the bottom and it has this Kevlar braid attached to the ring. These little teasers here are glow in the dark, so it kind of gives a little nice attraction to your jig. The only thing that some people are concerned about is the Kevlar braid itself on a long duration fight. So, you know, something where if you're able to pull it in quick, you're good to go. While in this scenario, you have absolutely no point of failure except for the gauge of perhaps the split ring, or if they're bending this jig to the point where the wire is compromised. These two are the Mustad rip rollers in 400 gram and 500 gram. If you look at them side by side, they're very identical in length. However, let's just put it right here, eye to eye right here, right? This is 100 gram more. And I did this 400 gram for about 15 minutes and I was over it really fast and I moved myself down to the 250 and under. The only reason that these were really popular was getting your jigs into the strike zone as fast as possible. And these will definitely do it. It's just winding it back up. It felt beyond a chore. <laughs> and I was in low gear most of the time to try to bring it back up. So how you want to rig it up, um, it's the hooks, the Jobu hooks itself, and the split rings. The split rings, I think the recommendation was number eight and up. Now, these two here are number tens. I don't have uh, the bags for the number eight or nine right now, but I'm just gonna give you an example. Two models here, they say ultra split ring and hyper split ring from owner. This minimum is 370 pound, and for the hyper wire, it's a strength of 220 pounds. And I wanna show you the difference between the two. This is the ultra, and then on my right side is a hyper. If you can see the gauge difference between the two. I'm gonna tell you the truth. Opening this thing, it's almost near impossible to try to get this nine knot ring through it. I could get it onto the jig eyelet, but this ring, I mean, it's its really difficult to do. And I did get it on onto this one, but it was like almost prying it on. And you can see even with it on now, there is a little bit of a gap. You can see a hairline gap in between it. And just to show you that sample, I'm, I'm gonna put this, see if this fits right through, which it does right here. Here's one that's not pried much yet and I can't get it through. So it is going to split it up a little bit once you open it. Now the tools you're gonna to need to open those split rings. So these are your tools right here. The one on the left is a braid scissor, but it does happen to have a split ring tool at the tip. This is a Zeron 496. And I think this is probably something like the base that you would want. That's very precision. It works really well. If you're gonna go to the Ultra, um, something like this makes it a little bit easier, especially on the bigger ones. This one's convenient because it has braid scissors and I could cut off my line. And you know, most of my rock fishing and local islands, it works perfectly fine. This one will fit into your panel cases really easily. Something like this, you just wanna keep it in the bag, but it works best if you're doing all this at home on this one. You'll see a little bit of rust here because I left it on the deck so I can easily swap out my jigs. So here you're gonna see some variations of swivels that I have here. These three are your power swivel type. They are rated from size two for 230 pound. This one is by owner, and this is a number one size. This is rated for 410 pounds. And here is the S-Pro 2 watt. It's rated for 550. You know, you can use these on your leaders and also on your assist hooks. So this one here is ball bearing types. They're a little bit more beefier, a little bit more robust. It's just a little extra dollar on this. I didn't get a lot of these. I just got a couple of them because I was ideally setting it up for leaders only. This is a number six rated for 260 pounds and number seven rated for 320. So these are the sizes between the two. On the left, I have the S Pro 2 watt. And on the right side, I have the AFW number six. 
Um, on the left, it's rated for 550 pound, and on the right is 260 pound. So here we have the assist hooks, and I want to show you how we have this rigged up. On the top part, this will go onto your leader and to your jig. This is a number 10 owner hyperwire, and between the two of them, I just have two setups power swivels. This one's from Owner on this side and this one's from S-Pro on this one. The bottom of it is a number eight or number nine. I can't recall. Their hyperwire uh, attached to them are Jobu 7 dot hooks. Leader line. You're going to want something at least 150 pound test and above. This one is 175. A buddy of mine was the one that helped me set this up. So this one was on 200 pound line and he crimped it on to something very similar to this AFW ball bearing. And I'm gonna say that this is a good number five size. So the leader line is very simple. One end is going to your main line. So you tie your braid here, whichever knot that you feel most comfortable with. And the other end, you're going to attach it to your assist hooks. With your split ring tool, you're gonna to attach it on. So now you have your leader line and you have your assist hooks on and depending on which jigs you want to use, let's say the first one we're going to go for is the heaviest because we want to be, it's the first night we want to get it down as fast as we can. Bring out this piece that I'm only going to wind up for about 5 to 10 minutes. And what you're going to do is just attach it quickly on right here and you're good to go. And after that 5-10 minutes nothing's biting, hey, move on to something lighter split ring tool, remove it, move it to another jig. And this way it's going to be a lot easier on how you switch your jigs. One note that I do want to explain is careful for the length of your hooks, top and bottom, if they overlap. So for instance, now that we have this assist and the bottom hook here, we don't ever want to be able to overlap each other. This is okay. This The hook here I'm trying to. And what I mean by overlap is that it may catch on and caught up during the drop process or the retrieve and they're just stuck in this formation here. This one's actually okay. It doesn't cross and overlap each other. So you're okay here. But if it does, maybe do something that's a little bit shorter by either dropping down the ring size if you have to or using a shorter hook, a smaller hook in that scenario. But this is perfectly okay. So during Christmas, um, I got this as a gift from Tackle Direct. Uh, it was just from things I ordered. And it came with scissors to cut your braid and your little cloth, you know, that you're gonna attach to your waist, right? This is just your, your bait cloth. So I wanna give this away. All you gotta do, leave a comment below, hit like, hit subscribe. If you're within the local states, I'll ship this to you um, on the 48 states. Uh, this is a jig bag and what it does is if you have the setup like how we have it here, you can just kind of tuck them in. And I know that this is going to be floating around. So what you want to do is actually have some type of rubber band or something that can keep it away. And this is probably one of the easier methods to just store your jigs. Uh, would I want to keep this? Yeah, of course I would. But I, I feel like I already have, um, what is it called? You guys see my fish labs? I just throw on fish labs and I have my panel boxes that I have between the two. So something like this. I'm not including the jigs, but the bag, scissors, and this cloth is yours. Thanks again, guys. I appreciate you guys watching.